Continue. Oh. Oh, man. Okay, what was going on? Last time we left off, we had just met uh, Le Croc, monsieur, right? And, uh, and then Cocorico was like, yo, did you change your name? And we were like, yeah, what of it? That's my business. And he was like, hmm. Because I was like, well, it's fine if we tell him that we changed our name in the past because he's all about justice. And even if he thinks there's a possibility that we were involved in the rebellion, he's not going to, like, do anything weird until he knows for sure. Lolcaholic, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for becoming a burrito. I hope you enjoy as we deduce stuff, I guess. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Got Notre Dame. Oh, we've got another. Oh, we've got another little cutscene to watch. So let's do that. Oh my gosh, who's this? A is the room to your liking, Mademoiselle. Don't call me that. Oh, my apologies, madam. Uh, what are your thoughts? Is the room suitable or it's dark? cramped and more than a little macabre but it will do excellent well i hired private security to guard the entrance 24 hours a day so rest assured your weapons are safe tell me friar are we doing the right thing of course we are madam there can't be change without bloodshed no revolution without revolution surely you aren't having second thoughts of course not. I want nothing more than to serve justice to the corrupted rulers of this country. When the time comes... Uh, uh, oh! I will be the one to pull the trigger. Damn! Okay. Okay, let's see. Nestled beside Notre Dame, the dark alleyway where we met Croc Monsieur. I'm trying to figure out what we need to do now, though. Uh, we met Croc Monsieur. Cocorico asked if we were, if we changed our name because there's suspicion that we were part of the rebellion and might have been an assassin in the rebellion. Is that what they think we were? Uh, hmm. So, oh, we also have that weird side quest with the doctor that's just, like, fetch quest after fetch quest after fetch quest. And those those French mice were, like, trying to gouge us for the items we need. But we have 21 days total, right? What was our final day? How many days have we used so far? I don't- I really don't want to waste days. And I'm also worried that if I go back to the market, I'm like, fine, I'll pay for your dumb shit. She'll be like, price has gone up, motherfucker, and I'll be really irritated. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. <gasps> Mike Mellon, thank you so much for subscribing and becoming a burrito. My goodness. You have bait to give the fisher. What do you mean? I don't think I do, though. Okay, but I'm gonna... By the way, don't spoil me on stuff in the chat. Even if you're trying to be helpful. If I ask for help, give me help. But don't give me help unless I ask for it. But because I read that, I am going to go here. Because they won't... They don't let me look at my shit! When I'm in this menu, which drives me crazy, I should be able to look at what items I have. But. Okay, wait, we have the Louvre. Why would I go to the Louvre? It's put clocks next to all this shit to like confuse the fuck out of me.
Maybe I'll go back to the library? Okay, I'm gonna go to the bridge. Sorry, just wanted to deliberate for a minute. Oh, oh well, well, <clears throat> the rude lawyers are back. Why are you here? Why are we here? Oh, yes, well, we have some questions. Glass shards, an invoice, a shopping list. Oh, that's right. An invoice dropped by the croque monsieur promises the delivery of weapons to the sleeping city. Oh, we should have gone to the library and talked to the Russian ass about <laughs> what the sleeping city might mean. Book of Judges. Shopping list. Maybe the chocolates I can give to him? So, have you caught anything good? Uh, today? No, not a kipper. The new fishing line is really good, but I've run out of bait, so it's practically useless by itself. That is quite an issue. Hey, Falcon, do you think that fishing line would work as the high-grade string Monsieur Trouvé wanted? We already did all of this, but I'm going to do it again. It just might. Mr. Kingsley, since you aren't catching anything, would it be possible for us to take that new fishing line off of your hands? Sure. <clears throat> What's it worth? Didn't we already go over this fishing line payment business? Yes, but that was compensation for the old fishing line. If you want to buy this new line, it's a whole separate matter. Also, I saved your life. And I was polite enough not to rub it in your face. <clears throat> much. Oh, fine, fine. How much did the new line cost? Ten francs. Boo! Alright, we did all this. Me. Worms. Sweets! <gasps> I have bait. I have sweets. <gasps> yes. I think I have some bait that you can use, monsieur. Boop. Will these work as bait? Uh, are these fancy chocolates? Wow! <clears throat> yes! Yes, those would definitely work. Okay, uh, I'll just take these chocolates off your hands. <clears throat> and, mm, and, mm, I'll give you my fishing line. And the deal is made. Woo! Wait, wait, hold on. Now, I have fishing bait, but no fishing line. Oh, I didn't think this deal through at all. <clears throat> oh, well, can I help with something else? Nope, that's it. Bye. Okay. We have the fishing line! But I paid a lot of money for them. These chocolates, I mean. Oh, uh, if I had thought of the fact that I could use them as bait. This is, I feel like this whole quest line is intended to make you go broke. And that drives me crazy. <sighs> okay, so now copper pot. Sparrowson seems to think that he's seen a copper pot somewhere. But I don't know where. It wasn't there, because we went. Oh, he's the one who we're getting this shit for. Oh, maybe it's here. Maybe that's why the clock is here. Oh, maybe the maid will help us. Oh, my God, because she steals all their shit. Oh! oh, my God, there you are. I remember you guys. You totally helped me out with that weird thing where I was stealing all of their stuff. Watch this, mademoiselle. Okay, which country is better? Great Britain or the United States of America? I'm going to have to go with the USA. Because they kicked Britain's derriere in the battlefield? Well, sure that, but also because they are proving themselves to be a unique, formidable nation. It's quite remarkable what they've achieved in such a short period of time. Um, I totally prefer the USA. I guess there's a lot of opportunity there. Well, 
what is this about, mademoiselle? Well, I'm thinking of, like, taking a trip, like, a forever trip, you know? Because, like, everywhere I go in Paris, people are, like, really angry and depressed and stuff. It's like, I don't know, like, violence is about to break out at any minute. I've saved up a lot of money, so I'm gonna just, like, get out of here, you know? Follow my dream and stuff. Oh, well, who's going to look after Chateau Crenier? Well, with the barons, you know, <laughs> being killed... They decided to auction off his estate. I think the demi owls were showing some interest in the house, so I guess they can, like, handle the household duties themselves. The demi owls, you say. Interesting. Anyway, this might be the last time we see each other, so I'll just say au revoir, Sparrowson, and au revoir, Monsieur Falcon. Farewell, mademoiselle. I wish you a pleasant voyage. So long, mademoiselle. Don't let those yanks push you around. Wait, but... <laughs> I think we did too. Hey, Falcon, I think we forgot something. Hmm. The rebels, the crook monsieur, all that juicy investigative stuff. We're supposed to be asking questions. Oh, yes, that completely slipped my mind. Well, it's no matter. Colleen didn't seem like the type to get involved with rebels and arms dealers. She probably knew nothing. I suppose. In any case, she seems to be the only one with enough sense to escape before the violence starts. Yes. Oh man. That didn't work out how I thought it would at all. That was like a pretty... That made sense, right? To think that the fucking giraffe who steals all of the silverware and all of the, you know, sort of share items in the house would wind up stealing a copper pot at some point. Ah, oh, man. Uh, all right. Conciergerie. Where else would he have seen a copper pot? We went to the tavern. Didn't we? I feel like we must have. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go to the library and ask about the sleeping city, since I know that I want to do that anyway. Do you think Nathan likes riddles? Of course, all librarians like riddles. Now, it seems like a bit of a stereotype, that's all I'm saying. Stereotype or not, we have to hope it's true. That Buffin is our best chance at getting to the bottom of this. Well, it's time to put our polite faces on, because he's here now. <sighs> Good day, Dromeo. Dromeo? Fuck. This happens every time! <laughs> Dromeo. And Dromeo. <sighs> Good day, monsieur. It's a pleasure to see you again on this fine day. Tell me, kind monsieur, do you like riddles? Of course. Here is one for you, monsieurs. What has two mouths and four ears, yet talks twice as much as it listens? What has two mouths, four ears, and talks twice as much as it listens? Us? Alright. <laughs> uh, mm. You. It is you, messieurs. You. You come in here yammering, yelling, never stopping to close your beaks for one minute. Oh, <laughs> yes, indeed. Very good, monsieur. <laughs> Laugh, Sparrowson. We need to get these good books. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I just I can't fake laugh very well. Stop this farce. You messieurs obviously have some inane riddle that you want solving, so let us hear it. Go on, spit it out. Oh, yes, well, um, if we were to say there is a place called the Sleeping City in Paris, where would that be? It is a new one. The Sleeping City. Hmm. Oh, I've got it. Really? 
Of course, the riddle is trivially easy. There are plenty of locations that could be called a sleeping city, but only one place earns that title in Paris. Oh, and where would that be? We know the answer, of course, obviously. We are just fact-checking, making sure that, you know, you get it right, you know. Think through it, messieurs. What kind of city is only inhabited by those who sleep all day and all night? Um... Oh, I've got it. Sp I've got it. Spain! <laughs> I don't know what's happening to Sparrows. <laughs> I don't know why this like this donkey character throws everything off for me. I don't know why I can't just like Don't be daft, Sparrows. Spain isn't a city, but perhaps the monsieur is referring to the capital of Spain, Madrid. A nice sleepy place. Spain, Madrid. You two are remarkably dense, aren't you? Sleep is a metaphor, one of the oldest and most powerful metaphors in the history of literature. It symbolizes death itself. The sleeping city obviously refers to a city of the dead, a necropolis. Think, messieurs. Use your puny avian brains. Do we have any necropolises in Paris? Uh, maybe? Of course, the catacombs, the winding tunnels of the dead that lie beneath our very feet. Very good, monsieur. That is the first semi-intelligent thing you have managed to say all day. Do you have more questions, or...? Oh, yes. Tell us about the catacombs, I guess. Can you give us a brief rundown on the history of the catacombs? The cemeteries of Paris were over... <laughs> were overflowing by the end of the last century. It was a mess, from what I hear. To create space, King Louis XVI ordered for old skeletons to be excavated and put into the unused mine tunnels that lie under the city. So, with a little renovation, many years of hard work, the mines were successfully turned into a subterranean mausoleum. Oh, so what you're... It's... You're, it's basically a grave for a few thousand skeletons. Millions, more like. Don't underestimate the size of the tunnels, messieurs. How do we get in? I know that the bourgeois like to tour the catacombs, don't they? Correct. It was quite the bourgeois tourist spot some 20 years ago. But if you were hoping to pay a visit, you are too late. The church had all the entrances sealed shut fairly recently. Oh, why would the church do that? Believe it or not, they considered the turning of a mausoleum into a tourist attraction to be in poor taste. Oh! Right. They shut down all the entrances, really. Surely there must be one or two left untouched. If there is such an entrance, it is not public knowledge. I see. Bye! I think we're done here for now. Thank you for your time, monsieur. Good day. The sleeping city really is the Paris catacombs. There must be some way to get in. Hmm. An underground tunnel network would probably be connected to the city sewers, right? So, we just need to find the right manhole, and boom! We're in spooky, scary skeleton town! Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe it connects to the sin. Perhaps some swimming is in order. You two dunces are going to get yourselves killed. If you really wish to visit the catacombs, you would be best off asking those responsible for the closures. The... The dead people? The church, monsieur. The church would know if any unsealed entrances still exist. Oh! Right! Right! <laughs> okay, alright. We have so many places we can visit now. So many places! My goodness! Oh my gosh! So, we can go back to Notre Dame. And find out about all of that. Uh, court. Don't need to go there yet. Notre Dame is where we can ask about the shit, especially since we saw that cutscene. We know there's a goddamn lion lady in there. Uh, student tavern might have a copper pot. This game is so filled with goofs that I'm like am I missing a goof that'll point me to the copper pot and I just can't figure it out 
Concierge Rue de Marmosets. I have no reason to go back there. Tellier de Trouvé. I have no reason to go there until we have the pot. Uh. Let's go to Notre Dame. Ah, <gasps> oh, it's the judge, brother! The judge who's who's on the run! Guess what? They have the same voice. Easiest scene in the world. Did you sneak out to the Louvre again? I keep telling you, brother. You can't risk being seen. There's too much at stake. But the good word must be spread, my brother. We need as many supporters as possible. No more sulking in the shadows. No more cowering in the dark. We gotta rise up against our oppressors. Oh, but before I forget, here's your pen. I borrowed it. <gasps> That's like the pen we have. Again? Pfft. What happened to yours? Well, I lost it. So careless. Don't sweat the petty things, brother. Let's focus on removing the obstacles that stand in the way of our father's dream. Right. Like the annoying bird who's been poking his beak into our business. He's dangerously close to uncovering our secret. You want me to take care of him? It would be in our best interest. I have a trap in mind, but... Oh! Whoops! Uh, somebody's coming! You should probably hide! Uh... Ah, oh, fuck, it's you. Oh, uh, my brothers have returned! What can I do for you today, huh? Confession? Maybe? Actually, Friar, we are here for information. We want to learn about the catacombs that lie under Paris. The catacombs? You don't want to go in there. It's a wretched, haunted place. Oh, I'm sure it is, but we know that the church was responsible for having the entrances sealed shut. So we figured maybe there's a super secret friar-only entrance that only you know about. A secret entrance? Well, that's an interesting idea. You know, you're not the first birds to have asked about that. We aren't. Yeah, yeah. Cockerel paid a visit yesterday. Oh, with perfect posture and a snooty or one-eyed and scowling? The first. Prosecutor, I think he said he was. Anyway, tell you the same thing I told him. You venture into the catacombs. You ain't coming back. Understand? Was that a threat? No. Nope. Just a friendly word of caution. You wouldn't want anyone to get lost in the endless maze, huh? Now... You two will excuse me, I have a sermon to do, so be on your way. Damn, another dead end. Maybe it's time to wrap this up. We can go tell the inspector what we've found and call it a day. Don't quit just yet. I managed to take something from the friar's pocket when he gave his little warning. <gasps> another pen? <laughs> Seriously, again? It's becoming something of a bad habit for you. Well, go on then, let's suit you pilfered. This! You found this pen in the friar's robes. Yep. Interesting. Actually, more than interesting, this is amazing. This is the exact same pen that Judge Romulus uses. It even contains the same green ink. <coughs> huh! Do you think it's exactly the same pen, or do you think Romulus and Remus just have a matching set? I honestly don't know. But I do know this may come in handy. I'm going to keep hold of it. Woo! We are still at a dead end, though. My gut tells me the friar is hiding something, but I just can't get him to cough it up. Well, it's not like we can beat information out of him. Let's just go do other stuff. Maybe we'll stumble across more clues. Maybe you're right. Let's go. Oh. We can literally only go to the Rue de Marmosets? Interesting. The wolf names are a good joke, I know, aren't they? <laughs> I totally agree. There he is. <gasps> That's the rooster who shot the croc monsieur. <gasps> Which rooster? Which one? Oh, he's got the coat. It's gotta be. <gasps> 
Oh no! Are we gonna have to represent our bestie? Well, not our bestie. He's like literally the opposite of our bestie, but like he believes in justice. Are we gonna have to represent him when he's a prosecutor? That would be so weird. I think we're getting close to unraveling this whole rebellion nonsense. Let's not dawdle, Sparrows, and we're nearly there. All right, let me just deal with this letter first. Spam. Oh, I don't think so. It's... It's from Cocorico. Severin. Well, go ahead, Sparrows, and let's hear it. JJ, if this letter reaches you uninterrupted, it means I have been captured or killed by the rebels. No! Cocorico. What? Last evening, the inspector gave me a tip-off of a midnight trade between the rebels and the croque-monsieur on Rue de Marmoset. I intend to watch from the shadows, but I know that such a mission is a dangerous one, so wish me luck. If this is the last correspondence you ever hear from me, I suppose I should end on a positive note. Falcon, you are a good friend and an excellent lawyer. I am sorry for belittling you all those years. Kind regards, Severin Cocorico. No, Cocorico! Is... Is this for real? There's no way! This letter has to be some sort of a setup. It isn't Severin's handwriting. Where do you think he is? I don't know. Why would he go alone? I don't know. But we have to go help him, right? I mean, if that trade was at midnight last night and it's ten o'clock now, he might still be okay. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, come on, Falcon! Pull yourself together! We've got to act fast while there's still time on the clock! Sparrowson, I have a bad feeling in my gut. Well, yes, me too. This letter is terrifying stuff. No, you don't understand. I know that if Severin isn't already dead now, he will be very soon. And there is nothing we can do about it. What are you talking about? You don't know that. I do. I'm certain. We've messed up. We've missed something. We've overlooked something vital, and now Severin's fate is sealed. You're spouting defeatist nonsense. Come on, Falcon, let's go visit the Rue de Marmoset. We might find a clue. Aww. Cocorico. Uh, oh, God, is that blood? Come on, Sparrowson, keep up. <sighs> There's no time for wheezing. If Cocorico was last seen here, then there has to be a clue nearby. <sighs> right. Select an area to examine. The blood, maybe? There's a pool of blood here. It looks fresh. Cocoricos? I see drag marks heading toward that tunnel, which leads straight to the Seine. If I had to guess, someone was killed here last night, and their body was hastily disposed of in the river. Maybe the croc. Maybe he killed the croc. But I see several sets of bloodied footprints, too. Some faint, but they head that way, toward the main road. So he could still be alive. Let's see where the footprints go. Can't we look? Okay, no, but... I get that everyone in this world has human hands. Do they also have human feet? Could we not just look at the footprint and be like, that looks like a crocodile foot, or that looks like a goddamn rooster foot? Like... Could we not tell the difference? Here, the footsteps lead... Right to Notre Dame. Which seems that way. Unbelievable. Where's the friar when you need one? Forget the friar. Let us keep following the blood trail and see where it ends up. Wait a minute, Falcon. Sh shouldn't we get the police involved before we go any further? Oh, God. I don't want to take the time to call the police. I think if I do, he'll be dead. I think that this is going to be like one of those decisions where it's like, yeah, let's take a minute and call the police, but that one minute is enough where by the time we get there, Cook Rico's dead. Fuck. You remember what Severin wrote in his letter. The inspector was the one who gave him the tip-off. Hmm, what are you saying? Do you think the police are in on this? At this point, anything is possible, so we have to stay focused on the trial. Hey, wait up! That way leads straight down to- Man. 
I am famished. When is that mouthy parrot gonna relieve me of my duty so that I can grab a snack? The trail keeps going. Hey, isn't that the conciergerie jailkeeper? Quack? It's Quark, you dummies. Oh, I had no idea you were a religious man, monsieur. I'm not. I had a career change. Private security pays a lot better than jailkeeping, you know. Monsieur, we don't have much time, so I will keep it brief. We're following a trail that leads to the door behind you, and we need you to let us pass. The door behind me? Ha! <laughs> you idiots! That door leads straight into the catacombs! You don't want to go there! The catacombs? And besides, just because I know how to get in doesn't mean I'm gonna just, like, let you pass, huh? I've got a job to do! I have integrity! I promise to act as a guard, and that's what I'm gonna do! Do you want to bribe? Bingo! What you got? Here's my fist! I wish this game let me save scum so bad, just so that I can be like, let's see what this does! <laughs> but it doesn't! It doesn't want you to save scum, and that's fine. Um... There's a present. What do I have? Maybe it, the fountain pen? But it's evidence. Can't get rid of evidence. Hmm. Here, yeah, for all trouble. Ten francs? What are you trying to do? Insult me? I'm not giving you any more money. I'll offer you something else. Hey, what are you doing? Monsieur, perhaps I wasn't clear. I'm short on both time and patience. Are you going to tell us to pass, or do I have to beat you until you are unable to stop us? Jeez, no need to get violent. You can pass. Door's right behind me, so just go. That's the door to the catacombs. It's that simple. Yeah, it's that simple. What? Are you expecting a hidden bookcase or something? Just go on. Look. Idiots. Walking straight into a pitch black maze without even a torch. I wonder if they'll get lost and starve, or if they'll find the crazy lion girl and get shot. Either way, ain't my problem. Upon entering the doorway, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves at the top of a stone staircase that spirals into the abyss below. Here. Um, here goes nothing. They begin the descent. I knew an underground passage would be dark, but this is ridiculous. I can't even see my hand in front of my face. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, Spiderson. Oh, I think that was the last step. Now it's just twisted tunnels ahead of us. I should take up smoking. If I smoked, I would have a match, and we would be able to see where we are. Plus, you know, all the health benefits. I'd probably be calmer. Keep it together, Spiderson. I know. I'll unravel this loose thread from my jacket. We could just trace the string to find our way back. You know, if we reach a dead end. Oh, good thinking. Lythesius and the Minotaur. Wait. There aren't any Minotaurs in here, are there? Head of a bull, body of a bull? You know, scary stuff. That's... Actually, never mind. Feels like there's a gap in the wall here, so I guess the path branches. You can feel a slight breeze coming from the passage to the left. Yeah, it seems a little more stagnant to the right. Oh, fuck. The breezy path or the stagnant path? Well, breezy would mean that there's airflow. But we're looking, f like, we're not trying to get out, though. We're looking for Cocorico. I think the stagnant path is probably better, because that's going to take us into the catacombs, right? <clears throat> the air must get more stagnant the deeper we travel into the tunnels. Let's press onward. Hey, Falcon, I don't want to, like, dump on you or anything, but when you threatened Quark back there, that was pretty scary. Scary? Not really. Quark is all talk. 
I knew there was no chance he would fight back. No, I wasn't scared of Quark. I was scared of you. I, I found you scary. I've never seen you get so angry before. Severin's life is on the lines, Perison. Forgive me for showing little emotion. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, path is branching again. Are my eyes going funky from the darkness, or is there a glimmer of light coming from the right path? No, I see it too. There's definitely light on that side. I think we should go toward the light, because if there are other people in here, they would have a light with them, because they're not dumb like we are, right? And follow the light. <gasps> oh, it's definitely getting lighter. I can see my hands again. That might just mean that we're getting close to an exit, right? Maybe this is all been a wild goose chase. Hush and listen. Voices. Voices. We are getting close. Wait, Falcon. Uh, aren't you scared? I'm terrified. 